Okay, uh, problem 3.5, part A asks us to find the Hermitian conjugates for three different operators, x, i, and d by dx. So let's start with uh, x, which hopefully is very obvious, right? If we have f inner product with x operating on f, this is just equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f star multiplied by x times f dx. Then via commutative property, we move this to the left. This becomes x f star times f dx. We want to move the x into the conjugate so that it's acting on f on the left side of our inner product. However, x is equal to position, which is real, so x is exactly the same as its complex conjugate. Therefore, this is exactly the same as the integral of x f star times f dx, which is therefore equal to the inner product of x acting on f with f, just like this. Therefore, uh, the Hermitian conjugate of x is just x itself. Uh, same thing with i, f i acting on f, integral of f star multiplied by i times f dx. Same thing, we move the i to the left, f dx. The only difference now is that if we want to move the i into this complex conjugate, uh, i actually is imaginary, it's going to get affected, that's going to become negative i times f star times f dx. Therefore, uh, the Hermitian conjugate of i is equal to negative i. Finally, d by dx, f d by dx acting on f. This is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f star times d by dx of f dx. Then, if we want to move this d by dx over to the left, this is just a matter of u sub, as we've seen multiple times in earlier problems. We're going to say u is equal to f star du is then equal to df star by dx, dv is equal to d by dx of f, df by dx times dx, v therefore is equal to just f, therefore via integration by parts this is equal to uv, which is f star f integrated from negative infinity to infinity, or value evaluated from negative infinity to infinity, minus the integral from negative infinity to infinity of v du, which is going to be df star by dx times f dx. This term right here is equal to zero because f in the context of quantum mechanics is going to be the wave function. The wave function has to go to zero at positive and negative infinity since the wave function has to be normalizable, meaning that we're going to get negative integral and negative infinity to infinity of df star by dx times f dx. Bring the negative in and under inner product notation this becomes negative d by dx f inner product with f. Therefore, the complex conjugate of the operator d by dx is equal to negative d by dx. And with that, we are done with part A. Okay, part B, we're trying to prove a bunch of different properties. Let's start with the first one, which is to show that the Hermitian conjugate of q hat r hat is equal to r hat Hermitian conjugate, q hat Hermitian conjugate. Let's start the inner product notation with the inner product between f and q hat r hat acting on f. In integral terms, this is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f star times q hat times r hat times f dx. Now we've encountered this property multiple times in previous problems. r hat acting on f occurs first and q hat is going to act on the result of r hat acting on f. So a more accurate way of writing this expression out is actually f star times q hat acting on r hat acting on f in parentheses, like this. Now, uh, we can redefine this with this being defined as a new function g, in which case in inner product notation this becomes f inner product with q hat acting on g, then, via the definition of Hermitian conjugates, this is the same thing as writing q hat f Hermitian conjugate on q inner product with g, which means that this is rewritten as the integral from in negative infinity to infinity of q hat Hermitian conjugate acting on f, the whole thing taking the complex conjugate of, multiplied by g, which, as we defined up here, is equal to r hat acting on f. 
Now, we do the same thing again, because remember, our goal is ultimately to bring both Q hat and R hat over to the left. So we're going to redefine this term right here. We're going to redefine the Q hat Hermitian conjugate operator acting on F as a new function. Let's call this Y, in which case this can be rewritten in inner product notation as the inner product between Y and R hat acting on F, in which case I can bring the R hat over via the definition of Hermitian conjugates which is that this is exactly the same as r hat Hermitian conjugate acting on y inner product with f, meaning that this is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of r hat Hermitian conjugate q hat Hermitian conjugate times f star multiplied by f dx, where I'm just taking, I'm skipping a few steps, I'm just rewriting y as what it actually is, in which case, this is exactly the same as r hat Hermitian conjugate q hat Hermitian conjugate acting on f inner product with f. So uh, just like that, we have shown when this is brought over to the left, it becomes this. Therefore, q hat r hat Hermitian conjugate is in fact equal to r hat Hermitian conjugate q hat Hermitian conjugate. And just like that, we have proved this first uh, the first of three properties. Okay, uh, this next one is actually a typo. Uh, what it's actually asking is for us to show that the Hermitian conjugate of Q hat R hat is equal to Q hat, Q, Q hat Hermitian conjugate plus R hat Hermitian conjugate. So let's start by writing uh, the inner product of F multiplied by, or the inner product of F with Q hat plus R hat acting on f. So in integral notation, this is integral from negative infinity to infinity of f star. And then if we use distributive property, this becomes q hat f plus r hat f dx. Expanding this into two integrals, this gives us f q hat f inner product plus f r hat f inner product. Then via definition, via the definition of Hermitian conjugates, this is equal to Q hat Hermitian conjugate acting on F, inner product with F, plus R hat Hermitian conjugate F acting on F. In which case, if I return back to integral notation, this is negative infinity to infinity of Q hat Hermitian conjugate times F, this whole thing starred times F plus, and I'm just going to combine these two integrals, uh, r hat Hermitian conjugate times f complex conjugate multiplied by f dx, in which case, uh, if I then want to use distributive property once again, but in reverse, this becomes negative infinity to infinity of q hat Hermitian conjugate uh, f plus r hat Hermitian conjugate f star f dx. Doing it again, this time getting the f star out, this becomes negative infinity to infinity, q hat Hermitian conjugate plus r hat Hermitian conjugate times f, this whole thing taken as a complex conjugate multiplied by f dx. Therefore, q hat plus r hat taken with its Hermitian conjugate is in fact equal to q hat Hermitian conjugate plus r hat Hermitian conjugate. And just like that, we have proved the second property. Uh, I don't even need a cut for this, actually. The third one is so simple. Uh, F times some complex conjugate constant uh, times Q hat acting on F, right? Uh, if we rewrite this as integral notation, negative infinity to infinity, F star C Q hat F dx. Move the C to the outside. This becomes equal to C multiplied by F inner product with Q hat F. Via the definition of Hermitian conjugates, this becomes equal to C times uh, Q hat Hermitian conjugate acting on F, inner product with F. Turning it back into integral notation, this is C multiplied by Q hat Hermitian conjugate F, these two things taken as the complex conjugate multiplied by F dx. We want to move the C into the complex conjugate in order to make it uh, a Hermitian conjugate. And to do that, remember, C is just, you know, some arbitrary complex number, as defined up here. C is some complex number. So that means if we move it in, this is just going to become C 
complex conjugate times q hat Hermitian conjugate times f, and this whole thing taken as the complex conjugate multiplied by f dx. And just like that, uh, oh sorry, I forgot to write the integral at the front. Uh, in inner product notation, this is c star q hat Hermitian conjugate f inner product with f. Therefore, the Hermitian conjugate of c times q hat is in fact equal to c star q hat Hermitian conjugate. And like that, we have also proved this final property. We are done with part B. Okay, part C is sort of a combined list of everything we've done in parts A and B, uh, multiply, uh, sort of uh, shoved together into one concept. Uh, so we are asked to construct the Hermitian conjugate of the latter operator, specifically A sub plus, and this is referring to the raising operator for the quantum harmonic oscillator back in chapter two, which we define as equal to, uh, let's see, one over the, I didn't, I don't like that. Okay, one over the square root of two h bar m omega, uh, multiplied by negative i times p hat plus m omega x hat and we are asked to find the hermitian conjugate of this so we take this whole thing and we're trying to find the hermitian conjugate so ultimately how do we get a hermitian conjugate right we're trying to take stuff uh given f inner product with an operator f what we're trying to do is if we rewrite this in integral notation we have f star q hat f dx uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this q hat and bring it over to the left and move it into the complex conjugate, right? That's what we've been doing this whole time. So let's break down this into steps. The first thing that you should notice is that there is this nice constant here that appears. And immediately you should know from earlier problems and also from earlier parts that the, the Hermitian conjugate of any constant is just equal to itself, right? If you have some constant, let's call it, you know, like imagine, imagine for x, right? Imagine position, which is a constant. Uh, the Hermitian conjugate of position, if you write this out, uh, this is just equal to, you know, f star times x times f dx. If we move the x to the left and bring it into the complex conjugate, well, for a constant or something that's real like x, uh, in this case, this is just, this is a real constant. Right? So for a real constant like position, uh, it is equal to its complex conjugate. So if we can just bring it in freely without any issue, therefore the Hermitian conjugate of a real constant is just equal to itself. So because of that, this thing right here is a real constant. Uh, we can literally just move it out and just ignore it, right? Because when we take the Hermitian conjugate, ultimately this thing isn't changed. So therefore, the Hermitian conjugate of the raising operator is in fact equal to one over the square root of two h bar m omega multiplied by the Hermitian conjugate of this stuff. So negative i p hat, uh, let's see, plus m omega x hat. And I'm just gonna rewrite x hat as x because the operator for x is just x itself. But yeah, basically, uh, Instead of taking the Hermitian conjugate of everything, I've already taken the constant here out of the equation because it isn't changed under Hermitian conjugate. So in reality, what we really have to worry about is this. Now, we can make this even simpler. Because uh, remember, way back up here, we showed uh, this property, that the Hermitian conjugate of two operators added together is just the sum of their individual Hermitian conjugates. So in fact, this is exactly the same as one over the square root of two h bar m omega multiplied by negative i p hat Hermitian conjugate plus m omega x Hermitian conjugate. And once again, here we run into yet another simplification step where this once again is going to be some positive constant, right? m omega is a positive constant. x is position, which is just some arbitrary constant. Sorry, not positive, real. Uh, m omega is some real constant. X is a real number, and it's going to turn into a constant at some point. So because of that, the Hermitian conjugate of this thing is exactly equal to itself. So therefore, we've taken one more step out of this. This is equal to one over the square root of two h bar m omega 
times negative i p hat Hermitian conjugate plus m omega x. So in reality, what we're really trying to find is the Hermitian conjugate of this. And we can simplify this even more. You know, we can take it one step further and recognize that, you know, this negative i under Hermitian conjugate just becomes a positive i. So we can move that out of it as well. Move out as i times uh, the Hermitian conjugate of p hat. In which case, uh, let's define p hat. p hat is equal to negative i h bar d by dx. So the Hermitian conjugate of p hat is equal to negative i h bar d by dx Hermitian conjugate. Immediately, h bar can be brought out, negative i becomes a positive i under the same logic as before. So this is going to equal positive i times h bar d by dx Hermitian conjugate. We already showed that the Hermitian conjugate of d by dx is just the negative of d by dx in part a. So this is equal to negative i h bar d by dx. Sorry, I forgot to write a Hermitian conjugate right here. So therefore, this is actually the Hermitian conjugate of the raising operators is just equal to one over the square root of two h bar m omega multiplied by i, and then the Hermitian conjugate of p hat, which we just solved right here. So negative i h bar d by dx plus m omega x. Simplify this out. You know, the two i's make a negative one. The negative one cancels with a negative one in here. This is equal to one over the square root of two h bar m omega multiplied by h bar d by dx plus m omega x. And just like that, we are done with this problem.